Joan Pinnock, Jamaica Das, for Northeast USA Advisory Board member, Congresswoman Yvette Clark, Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Ambassador Saunders, Director of Diaspora and Consular Affairs, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Erin Luhin, Future Leader, Northeast, Community Leaders, Honorees, Fellow Jamaicans and Friends of Jamaica, good night. It is night, it's not the evening, right? It's morning. Well, it's a pleasure for me to be here this morning to greet you. And please permit me as to extend a warm greeting to our guest speaker, Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith. And I'd like to also congratulate the honorees tonight who are well-deserving in their field. And I'd like you to join your hands in applauding them tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor this evening to introduce our guest speaker, Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Senator Johnson-Smith was appointed Minister of Foreign Affairs on 7th of March 2016 and has primary responsibility for diaspora affairs. Ms. Joan Pinnock, diaspora, diaspora Advisory Board Member for Northeast. USA, Congresswoman Yvette Clark and her mother, former Councilwoman Una Clark. <laughs> tonight's honoree, Dr. Una Clark, pardon me. Tonight's honoree, tonight's awardee, Ambassador Sharon Saunders, Director, Diaspora and Consular Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Mr. Darren McCree, Acting Consul General of Jamaica, New York. Ms. Erin Liu Hing, future leader, Northeast USA, heads of diaspora organizations, community and religious leaders, fellow Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica, good evening to you all. Good morning. Good morning, exactly. <laughs> and I particularly regret that I missed the cocktail hour because I have really hoped to meet as many of you as possible in a relaxed setting and have as many, you know, relaxed conversations as I could have. So I'm disappointed about that. And what I regret as well is that I missed Oliver Samuel's opening remarks. <laughs> but I have one thing to say to you. After the last three months, is not you one travel very regular. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that being said, it is truly, truly my distinct pleasure to be here with you on this special occasion. I know Ms. Pinnock and her team will have worked tirelessly in the execution of the Jamaica Diaspora Northeast Regional Conference, as well as tonight's Talawa Awards Gala. This event not only brings the regional conference to a climax, but it also presents me, or well, I thought it would have presented me with a fuller opportunity to interact with all of you, engaged and active members of the diaspora. Please allow me to join you in warmly congratulating toward tonight's awardees. Each one has made outstanding contributions to the arts, politics, religious affairs, journalism, and sports. And their accomplishments must be and must remain an inspiration to us all as we too serve and seek to serve with excellence. I'm pleased to note that the theme of your conference, Building a United Diaspora for Growth and Prosperity in Jamaica, is fully aligned with the Government of Jamaica's priority development goals. That choice of theme, therefore, certainly bodes well for a positive and effective partnership with the government and people of Jamaica towards the attainment of those critical goals. Ladies and gentlemen, successive administrations of the governments of Jamaica have seen the wisdom of working with you, our countrymen and women overseas. We do so not because it's convenient, not because you're needy, 
not because others are doing so and we should follow. We do so because you have made it clear that while you have left the shores of our island, you have not left us behind. You want to do something to contribute to the country's development and you continue as you build yourselves here to build us at home. We know that in any partnership, both sides stand to gain. That is the essence of the word partnership. So fellow Jamaicans, I have to tell you how proud I am of your industry, your dedication and achievements, your contributions to the development of this year new homeland are significant. I'm aware that many members of the Jamaican diaspora, including some of you present to here tonight, continue, continue, continue to distinguish yourselves internationally in your respective fields of endeavor, making an indelible mark on the world. Furthermore, beyond our recognition of tonight's awardees, you would all, of course, be sharing my joy in having heard that five Jamaican women doctors were among the top 10 Caribbean female doctors in the United States of America. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's particularly noteworthy that three of the five are from this region. So. And I'll just share their names. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. Dr. Michelle Johnson, Associate Chief of Cardiology at Memorial Sloan Kettering. Dr. Kathy Ann Joseph, noted for breast cancer research and treatment at the Bellevue Hospital, New York. And Dr. Millicent Comrie, noted obstetrician and gynecologist. Together with Dr. Carol Big, adjunct professor at Florida International University, and Dr. Anne Collier, Cornell University trained and board certified dermatologist. So, again, more women to be proud. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamaicans in New York comprise a significant portion of our diaspora community. Indeed, the Northeast region is host to one of our most vibrant and long standing diaspora centers. Your continuing and demonstrated interest in the diaspora engagement processes over the years has helped to fuel the approach taken to addressing issues of relevance to our shared interests. Having come into office only three months ago, we are determined to work to harness the goodwill, the interest, and the opportunities that exist within our diaspora to meet the needs of our people for social and economic well-being. Our strategic approach to diaspora engagement is informed by the recognition that we should begin by putting our house in order. The lessons of the past clearly teach that you will only feel comfortable in making your own contribution when you are convinced that we are not only saying that we're serious about progress in job creation for your family and friends at home, but in, and in promoting economic growth but that we actually take the necessary, even if difficult steps to demonstrate this. So let me share with you tonight, just some of what the government of Prime Minister Andrew Holness has been able to achieve in three brief months. Our government has a clear vision and blueprint for Jamaica's development. Its overarching mandate is the achievement of sustained economic growth with the attendant benefits of the creation of jobs for our people. We have clear goals and objectives and will work assiduously towards achieving those targets. In support of these policy objectives, we've created the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation to bring together under one umbrella the critical agencies and departments that play a crucial role in identifying, stimulating, facilitating, coordinating, and regulating investments in our economy. In so doing, we've taken and are taking steps to address your frequently expressed concerns related to the long and complex bureaucratic procedures for doing business in Jamaica. Through a new holistic and coordinated approach, we have already made some progress in reducing the bureaucratic barriers so as to increase the speed of decision-making and policy execution 
thereby enhancing government's effectiveness. The evidence shows that our nation is certainly poised to achieve significant economic growth, and the following international ratings are among those which strongly suggest that long-term plans, some of which started between 2008 and 11, others which started between 2012 and 2016, are yielding some of the desired results. Jamaica is up seven places to 64th on the World Bank Doing Business Report of 2016. We were recognized as the best Caribbean country for doing business by Forbes in 2015, and we were also voted as the world's leading cruise destination and the Caribbean's leading destination at the World Travel Awards in 2015. <laughs> we recognize, of course, however, that more needs to be done. To translate, for example, the legislative changes that would have given rise to the jump on the Doing Business Index, changes needed to be made and still need to be made in order to contribute to the full experience, to change the full experience of businessmen and businesswomen on the ground. And this is part of the work underway in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. Another critical initiative that the government has undertaken is the appointment of an Economic Growth Council, chaired by the Honorable Michael Lee Chin, who is himself a diasporian, business magnate, investor, and philanthropist. The council's mandate is to actively seek out and to bring investments to Jamaica, ensuring that these investments are feasible. Very important point. In the coming weeks and months, Mr. Lee Chin will embark on a roadshow to share the vision and to apprise the diaspora of the range of investment opportunities which exist, while sim simultaneously learning from you the areas in which you wish to invest, and listening to your concerns about the challenges which currently exist in this area. This is part of the collaborative appro approach which is intended and which is being taken by this administration. As promised, we're also in the process of implementing an increase in the income tax threshold from which over 250,000 Jamaican employees will begin to benefit next month. This change is not only in line with our plan to implement a shift from direct to indirect taxation, a plan which has been endorsed by international development partners, but will, most importantly, also serve as an incentive for our workers to become more productive without the countermanding pressure on employers to increase wages. The planned overhaul of Jamaica's tax system will be a critical element of the growth agenda as we seek, seek to shift the burden of taxation away from current areas of focus which retard investment, growth and economic activity. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that many of you will be pleased to note that another key priority in our move towards prosperity is the implementation of measures to increase the supply of housing while broadening access to financing for the purchase of housing. Financing mechanisms include the lowering of interest rates for loans provided by the NHT, and together with increased use of public-private partnerships through a re-energized housing agency of Jamaica, housing projects and related construction activity will serve as an engine for economic growth and prosperity for Jamaicans. Our plans also include the completion of several major infrastructure investment projects, namely the logistics hub, Vernon Field, the irrigation project in southern St. Elizabeth, expansion of the Kingston Container Terminal, and the expansion of the East-West Highway. Ladies and gentlemen, the unacceptably high levels of crime and violence have also been of concern to our administration. In that regard, I'm pleased to report that there has been a 10% reduction in serious and violent crimes for the first five months of the year in comparison with the same period last year. However, let me underscore that we are certainly nowhere near where we need to be in respect of effective management of this social monster that has destroyed so much of our vital human capital. Furthermore, whatever the numbers say, it is a priority of this administration to return Jamaica to a place where people once more feel safe. We know
know that this is an area of concern to you and your families, especially those who are intending to return, who want to return to visit and invest. It is worth noting that the recent successes in crime reduction are due in large part to the collaborative efforts of a wide range of stakeholders, including the police, citizens, and civic organizations. We intend to continue to build out these partnerships. You, the diaspora, members of the diaspora, are critical and central to the success of this national drive against crime particularly as part of the solution lies in the provision of employment and improved social support. The opportunities are vast and there is huge potential for your creativity and talents to be fashioned into viable business propositions. We will be implementing a five-pillar strategy, which is a comprehensive approach to effectively tackle the root causes of crime and its related social ills. The strategy will also treat with issues relating to the apprehension and prosecution of offenders and the implementation of more rehabilitative programs. We hope and trust in your support of these initiatives as you learn more about them, because your support will undoubtedly be essential. Ladies and gentlemen, against that background, I believe now is a good time to return to the area of how we proceed with that for engagement which to date has borne excellent fruit on several fronts, especially in the areas of health and education. We believe in the prospects for deepening and broadening our relationship, so that the benefits to be derived by you are more tangible, and those by us at home are more widespread and sustainable. It is my intention to use opportunities such as these and through arms such as the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation to explore in meaningful ways your ideas for how we may do so. Over the coming months, I hope to have the chance to travel to other diaspora communities and to continue the consultations. And certainly, we need to find a way to deepen the interaction here. As both times, when I came in, in April, yes, it was April, sometimes it all seems a blur when I look back over the last three months, and, um, and today, where I had intended and hoped to have deeper interactions, and it, life just did not work that way. But as we do so, as we work on increased and improved impactful measures, let me assure you that for our administration, you, the members of the Jamaica diaspora, wherever you are found, represent a wealth of human capital with which we wish to construct a solid partnership towards building a better and more prosperous Jamaica. I therefore use this opportunity to reaffirm the government's commitment to deepen, enrich, and strengthen the relationship between Jamaica and the diaspora globally. Indeed, the engagement and involvement of our diaspora is a major pillar of our foreign policy, and the ministry and its missions will play a greater role in this new thrust. At the same time, we are cognizant that the, of the fact that the Jamaica Diaspora Partnership is symbiotic and that there must be avenues through which you, our nationals overseas, can also benefit. The partnership must therefore evolve in a way that yields rewards which ultimately creates prosperity for you and your families in your host country and communities. So we will use innovative methods and create new paradigms to ensure that you, the diaspora, have a greater voice and greater involvement in building our nation. We're also seeking to broaden our outreach to non-traditional locations where Jamaicans live and work. This includes the Caribbean, Asia, Africa, and Latin America. In addition, we recognize that young members of the diaspora constitute our future leaders, common F, common L. And so, as we go forward, we will develop specific programs to engage the second, third, and hopefully the fourth generation as part of our broad engagement strategy. There's no denying that the da diaspora engagement and involvement have tremendous potential to bolster Jamaica's economic advancement. It is essential, therefore, that our relationship be further strategically streamlined to maximize the value of your contributions to Jamaica's national development, and in particular, towards the attainment of economic growth and job creation. 
There's an increasing number of avenues through which you may do that. These include investment in critical areas of the Jamaican economy, such as tourism, including health and wellness services, which are being developed now, manufacturing, agribusiness, energy, mining, logistics, and financial services, creative industries, which must be monetized as we value our culture, and of course, our world-renowned field of sports. Another exciting area in which diaspora investments can be channeled in the near future is through a raft of financial vehicles now being developed by the Jamaica Stock Exchange. We're particularly proud that in 2015, the Stock Exchange was recognized by Bloomberg, the global financial research company, as the top performing index out of a total of 92 markets. This is certainly deserving of applause. This is a remarkable achievement for a country of our size and stature, and I know that you will agree with me when I say another reason to say that we're little, but we're taller. Okay. The Jamaica Stock Exchange and the Junior Stock Exchange, the incentives for which have been retained by this administration, continue to attract increased global attention as they are well regulated and have strong governance frameworks. Your investments will be safe and will grow for you. You may therefore wish to strongly consider the option of investing in our local stock market. An issue in which many members of the diaspora here in the Northeast region and across the globe have a particular interest is the desire to be more active in the political process at home, particularly the democratic electoral system. That frequently expressed interest was further highlighted by the inclusion of a session on diaspora voting during this conference and I look forward to hearing what came out of the discussion. But I am personally delighted to advise that, as promised, and some of you may have heard that first interview with Dervan Malcolm on Hot 106, within, I believe it was two weeks of my appointment, where I indicated that I would be requesting our missions overseas in jurisdictions which have, in jurisdictions where diaspora voting is part of the constitutional framework of their host country, and we have done so, the missions have submitted their information, and the ministry has compiled a matrix of information. We continue to work through it so that we can present sensible options, as, as I stated and as I promised and will do. We will reactivate the Joint Select Committee of Parliament on Diaspora Affairs, which will be the vehicle through which consultations will be permitted on the different aspects of diaspora voting, which we believe should be and can be considered uh, for implementation. So that is a process very much underway, as stated, and I look forward to also hearing what came out of your conference on that issue today. Fellow Jamaicans, your consistent philanthropic contributions have been truly alt altruistic, making a significant impact on many lives and communities in Jamaica. I'm cognizant of the work of many individuals, community-based organizations, and alumni associations in this Northeast region that have made significant contributions in the areas of education, health, immigration, sports, among other areas. I commend you and I encourage you to continue this often arduous but most rewarding work. The government will, for its part, work assiduously to create a more enabling environment where you, members of the diaspora, can continue to make your contributions and see the value added of your efforts. I'm pleased to, advi pleased to advise that we will also, in short order, adopt a comprehensive national diaspora policy, which will provide a framework for maximizing the value of your contribution to Jamaica's overall development while at the same time addressing issues of concern to you. Apart from the inc inclusion of this administration's views and review, we are grateful for the significant contributions already made by the Jamaica diaspora to the formulation of that policy. Its ownership will therefore be yours as much as it will be that of the government and people of Jamaica at home. There's no denying that the Jamaican diaspora is an invaluable asset to Jamaica. As your diaspora minister, I look forward to forging new relationships with you, building on existing ones, and, and hearing your ideas and concerns. Collaboration is important to me, 
And I believe it's important for us to leverage each other's strengths and our influence to achieve common objectives. So let's together renew and reinvigorate our partnership to take Jamaica to higher levels of achievement so that we can all accomplish our shared vision of a cohesive, harmonious, prosperous, and stable Jamaican society. Brand Jamaica is ours. Let us promote it through a partnership towards prosperity for all. In closing, I want to once again recognize and congratulate tonight's awardees and to congratulate them, to wish you all the very best and to extend my hopes that we will enjoy the rest, the little rest, of what has been for me a truly special evening. Thank you very much for your time.